I was loading the chairlift, the high-speed chairlift up at Boyne Highlands on uh, uh, this weekend. And as I left, one of the guys from Boyne came up to me because they just had a project that, uh, uh, that went belly up. And he said, Pete, what's happened in Michigan is we've become the state uh, where the answer is you can't do that here. Okay? Whether it's building a house, uh, whether it's Harry out of trout farms wanting to build and expand their, their trout farm, it's kind of like the DEQ says, if you want it, if you stick a shovel in the ground, you know, we'll shut you down. If you want to open up a mine, we're going to create so many barriers to doing it that when you think you might be able to open six nickel mines in the UP and every time you build one and start one up, it's a thousand construction jobs, 500 permanent jobs. You know, we put up so many barriers that when you talk to the people who have invested and taken the risk of doing business in Michigan and creating those jobs, they'll say, we're never going to do it again because it's just too hard to do business in Michigan. You got these people that want to build power plants, all private sector money, uh, whether it's in Rogers City or whether it's in Bay City and uh, the Midland area, what does the state do? They say, no. It's all private sector money. People who want to invest capital and risk their capital and invest in Michigan, and we say no. And I'm sure that all of you can give me a whole list of other answers where it's like you can't do that here. And so when we keep saying to business people, you can't do that, you can't invest, you can't create jobs, why are we surprised that we have the highest unemployment rate in the country? Because in most industries and with most people, over a period of time, capital is mobile. It can either sit on the sidelines, it can move to another state, it can move to another country, but it's not firmly attached to Michigan that when you've got capital here, it's going to be spent here. So it's hard to do business in Michigan. The second thing is it's expensive to do business in Michigan. You know, I keep taking a look at how you reform the tax code and all of that and say, how do you do it and do it in such a way that it's revenue neutral? And you can do it, but the numbers get to be really ugly in terms of what happens to sales tax, what happens to business tax, what happens to the income tax. Anytime you start moving the numbers around, it just gets to be really ugly. And then you start taking a look at other states and you recognize that doing business in Michigan is just too expensive. So we've got to go through and we've got to find another two to three billion dollars of cuts uh, in this state government so that you can actually go through and do the third thing that I want to do, which is fundamentally change the tax code. You want to, you know, you wonder why businesses don't want to come to Michigan. Think about where we've been over the last seven or eight years, ten years, in taxes for business. People who invest money and decide where they're going to invest it. We had the single business tax. <coughs> then we had the plan to phase out the single business tax one-tenth of, one of a percent, or one-tenth of whatever the number was for 23 years, and it was going to go down to zero, right? So we started that process. Then they ran out of money, and they said, we're going to suspend that elimination of the business tax. So they suspended it. And then they said, but then we're going to put in a firm deadline where it's all going to go away. So they did that and they didn't have a replacement, and so then at the last minute they put in a, a Michigan business tax along with a sales tax on services, and the services tax was in place for 12 hours, and they got rid of the services tax and they put in a surcharge of 22%, 23%, and now you have one of the worst taxes in, Mich in, in the country. It's expensive, and it's hard to calculate. So when you actually try to figure out, when you actually do calculate what it is, you get sticker shock and saying, wow, this is expensive. So we've got to go back. My personal preference, the more I look at it, is you've got to do something with the sales tax, you've got to lower the income tax, and you've got to get rid of the Michigan business tax. You've got to send a clear signal to the rest of America and to people in Michigan uh, who are doing business in Michigan that the sales tax is gone, excuse me, that the, that the business tax is gone, and that there's a new day in Michigan uh, and we want you to keep your capital here. We want you to invest in Michigan, and this is a great place to do business. So it's a very straightforward plan. It ain't easy, all right? Get the bureaucracy to work for you, cut government by two to three billion dollars, and streamline the tax code. And when you get done with that, you go back through and do it again. Make sure the bureaucracy understands that they work for you, cut some more out of, out of government, and, and streamline taxes again. I've watched President Obama in office now for a year. Because people say, well, Pete, aren't there other things that are important to you? It's kind of like, absolutely. 
There are other things that I have a passion for, K through 12 education. I want to reform property taxes. I think property tax reform is probably one of the most important things that can happen for this group right here. Because when you tax, when you tax something higher, it gets less and less value. If, if you want, you know, so what does that mean? The higher we put the millages on these things, the higher we put millages on property, what happens? Property values go down. You put, you put 60 mils of taxes on property in Detroit, guess what? Property in Detroit ain't worth anything anymore. Everybody left. There's no demand for property anymore that has 60 mils on it. You put a homestead property tax on second homes, what happens to the value of second homes? Do they go up or does it go down? It goes down. We are a tourism state. How stupid can we be? It is now more expensive to own a second home in Michigan than it is if somebody wants to go to Montana or they want to go to Colorado. People have choices. And so what we've done is we've made sure that we've created an environment where too many investors are saying, we are going to park our money and park our risk somewhere other than Michigan because it's just too hard and too expensive. The next governor has to answer those two questions. How are you going to make it easier and how are you going to make it less expensive to do business in Michigan so that I want to be here and I can get a return on my capital? This is not brain surgery. This is not a brand new Michigan. This is just applying basic economic principles 101 that you have done in each of your business for as long as you have been in business. We have fundamental strengths that we can build this state off off of if we just go back to the basics rather than thinking we've got to create a brand new Michigan that none of us know what it will be what it will become. We've got inherent strengths in tourism and ag and manufacturing and education and healthcare and you know you just move forward off of those things and we will be fine if we do the right things.